I've got on the end of the phone, Neil Arthur from the amazing Blumange, who, one of my favourite 80s bands, I guess, really. Um, Neil, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the weather here, which uh, you're probably not over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've uh, we've got a storm adding our way at the moment, I believe. Uh, but, uh, it's not in the studio, which is where I am at the moment, so uh, I'm, okay. uh, I'm immune to it here. <laughs> now, if, I, if I've got this right, the band was formed in Harrow in London in 79, and you were, you were a duo for most of the career with, with Steve Luscombe. Um, how was it like recording those tracks i mean living on a cd is absolutely brilliant i love that track what was it like getting those things together um well uh, <laughs> it was uh, it took a while for us to um go from when you know the foreman of blamange in it was actually 78 i think uh-huh. uh, but um Who's going to split us uh, when it's that long? Ago? It might as well have been H seventy. Anyway, um, it, we, initially we made uh, electronic sounds, mm-hmm. so more experimental music, uh, and gradually we started. They started becoming more structured songs, and "Living on the Ceiling" was one of them. Uh, other ones were things like um, "I've Seen the World" and "God's Kitchen" and whatever. Anyway. Um, and then, of course, we had uh, technology on our side by then. We'd signed a record deal and we were able to go into very good studios and uh, over in work on 24 track as opposed to uh, cassette machines or uh, four track at best, you know. Mm. So, uh, and then with. Uh, the opportunity of meeting people like Dinesh and Deepak who came along and played sitar and uh, Indian percussion, particularly on uh, Living on the Ceiling, it made a big difference, you know, and we were learning all the time, I suppose, you know, as we went along. And uh, the advantage of being able to work with a producer, particularly on the first album, like Mark Howlett, uh, just unbelievable, you know. Now, you, that, that was one of the things that got me about that, that music or the music at that time. It was very eclectic. You you almost had the ability of bringing anything in, you know, oh, I like the sound of that, let's bring a kitchen sink in here. Or as you say then, a, you know, a sitar. Um, instruments and, and things that you wouldn't normally expect to find on synth music. W- were you aware of that? Or was it just a case of, oh, come on, let's have a laugh? Um, well, it wasn't a laugh. It was, uh, I, I mean, not much that I like one. <laughs> uh, it was... Uh, let, you know the opportunity was there, and uh, yeah, we were f- very open to uh, trying lots of different things. Experimenting, experimenting was our background, really. So experimenting with uh, introducing new sounds, and uh, as I said, you know, meeting Dinesh and Deepak was um, you know a fantastic opportunity, and they mm. become, became good friends. But I would go as far as to say that I. I feel the same. I feel, I feel the same way now. Whereas I, I work with electronic music all the time, but I would try most things um, to look outside the box. Basically, um, I do a similar thing with my lyrics. So yeah. uh, I've always, I've always done that. I suppose I look between the lines, really, uh, and I'm always trying to learn from from that as well. Those were very heady times for for sort of electronic music and and you know sort of the creation of a whole genre of music which had never been there before, and I guess Blamange were were you know one of the bands at the forefront of that. Um, were, were you aware of the innovative things that you were doing? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> In a word. In a word. Um, uh, we were just uh, looking for ways of expressing ourselves and not really aware that there was some type of zeitgeist uh, going uh, going on. Um, mm. You were just in the thick of something. You were just in the thick of things, trying to find a way of uh, expressing yourself. And it's, um, I suppose, history. And with you know, the, with hindsight, uh, looking back on these things, you can see, oh yeah, of course there were lots of people doing similar things but uh, a lot of them worked in isolation wondering <laughs> what the heck anybody else was up to <laughs> um, uh, of course you know as the years went by we did start meeting 
other people, uh, you know, like the Depeche Mode and Steve-O and, uh, or, you know, uh, Soft Cell and mm. uh, all these people who are making uh, uh, their their own own sounds. Um, so it, it was a basically, what, I think what happened was that punk uh, came along and it was like a very, it was an explosion. And yeah. out of that, there was a, once once the fireworks were over, there was this void left, and everybody was kind of going, well, what's next? What's next? And out of that, loads of different things came. Um, and for us, it was uh, leaning more towards electronic sounds. Uh, and that's that's where we went. Uh, so, um, you know, we've got, a, a, in, although our music doesn't sound like, uh, never sounded like punk, we owe a lot to that, uh, you know. Well, it is. They do say that the punk sort of cleared out a lot of the old stuff and brought in some really, really new stuff, um, new ideas and new new ways of working. Um, when when you sort of the, the band kind of broke up in um, eighty six and then got back together again in twenty eleven to release a fourth mm-hmm. album, um, Blank Burn. What what was that like? I, I don't remember that album mainly because I was over here, I suppose. <laughs> uh, well. The in the intervening quarter of the century, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of time in there, isn't there? <laughs> well, well, I uh, I remember coming off going back to the 80s. I remember walking off stage and we were playing at the Royal Albert Hall, and I just I walked off stage and said, "I'm not doing that again," uh, because Blumange had become something that I wasn't enjoying and. Um, Stephen agreed with me, and I think in those do, making that decision to stop, uh, it pro- it probably preserved the friendship, which has endured. Uh, the one thing, looking back, was maybe we should have stood back for a minute and gone, "Hold on a minute, come on, let's stick at this and have another, you know keep keep going." But uh, I, I still think we made the right decision and stopped for a while. Mm-hmm. And we both went off and were lucky enough to get music uh, jobs doing work for adverts and film and TV. I yeah. thoroughly enjoy it. They'll do from time to time. Uh, but I always carry, I carried on writing music um, songs, sorry, I should say. Yeah. And probably learning a little bit um, along along those intervening years as a lot of water went under a bridge and, you know, the bridge got rebuilt several times and you have lots of experiences. So when Stephen and I agreed to release another album in uh, 2011, we did it completely on our terms. So it was our, it was, we took a finished album to, um, a distribution company who were, were a record label um, but we took a finished album including the cover and all the stuff that went with it so um, it wasn't we are we weren't in a position where we were saying we're looking for singles off this album where we're going to make videos you know it was a completely different world the world had changed so much in terms of uh, the way record companies operated and the way in fact it had come back a a full circle. I mentioned punk earlier, and like out of punk came, uh, a, I think what I maybe term as uh, a lot of people term it this uh, DIY culture. Yeah, so, the, the indie bands and indie labels and things. Indie labels and what have you. So we effectively became an indie band, an <laughs> indie synth pop, um, and uh, we made our own album and released it through a distributed and had it distributed through proper. And then from that point on, I set up a, my own label with the help of a manager and um, now release music on my label and ask very good companies to help me distribute it. Um, and I'd much prefer it that way. Um, although our old catalogue is still controlled by, uh, and very well controlled by an old, a uh, very good record label. Um, and uh, we work closely with them for um, when there are releases of the old catalogue. Now, the the album that um, came out in October last year, Wanderlust, um, mm-hmm. something you made with um, 
um, Benj, is it? Down in M- Mentune Studios? Yeah. Yeah, ben, yeah Benj Edwards has a fantastic studio, yeah. What was it like working with him and, and being in that environment? Because, I mean, it, it, it must have been slightly different to what you'd done before. Um, well, I, I write the material uh, in my space, and then we get together further down the line to um, start fine-tuning it, replacing um, some instruments that uh, might have been laid down, uh, uh, VSTs might have been used, and then we'll replace them with the real thing. And Ben has a, a wonderful collection of old synthesizers. So, uh, and also he's a fantastic producer, uh, as well as a musician. So, um, I think he, you know, <laughs> he he's made, he's made a fantastic uh, contribution to the last two Blumange albums. And we also work on our own uh, project, which is the Fader project. So. Uh, We've we already had a, an album under our belts from doing that, mm. um, and there'll be another Fader album soon. So you're out on tour. Uh, you're going to be on tour. I think it's April and May um, in the yep. UK. What is it like going back on tour, or is it something you've never given up? You've always had the sort of live element to um, Blamange. No, I um, I st- when I I told you a few minutes ago about going off stage at the Royal Albert Hall yeah. and I I didn't perform again. I didn't want to. I really enjoyed being in the you know, one of the back rooms making uh, happily making music, um but not having to I didn't have to do interviews or <laughs> I didn't have to have my picture taken or any of that business and I really enjoyed it. But you know, there must have something changed in about two thousand and ten and I had a Stephen and I had a good chat about it. Uh, and I suddenly thought, actually, I am really lucky to get the opportunity to go and perform mm. and have people come along and uh, hopefully enjoy the show um, that we put on. And I embrace that now. And I, as I said, I feel very privileged to be in that position where I can can go out and people do come along and and hopefully enjoy what we do. Um, and long may that continue it's, you know, it's a very different thing I think I've got a lot now I, I probably appreciate it more I'm not saying I wasn't appreciative the first time round it's just all went so quick <laughs> and we were very young you know yeah um, and now I I try and I'm aware that I, and I really do try and take this in and uh, savour it I don't like I don't like the, t- the travelling at all and um, there's no um, flight on any of the hotels I've stayed in. I don't enjoy the monotony, mm. uh, the repetition of um, each day on tour. But the part I do enjoy, and and I'll continue doing this whilst I do, is I enjoy the gig, and I really enjoy meeting people. It's fantastic. I've learned so much. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the case. Um, yeah. I, I'll, uh, I, as I said, I'll embrace that and be thankful for it. So it, it's not the being on stage. I mean, that that is, as somebody once said to me, that, that is the adrenaline of rock and roll, is being on stage. Um, do, do you find that, that, that that sort of sparks you into doing even more stuff? Well, it, it's, um, yeah, you definitely get a, a buzz from it. But um, it's not the only... You know, reasons. One of the things I, you know, what I really like doing is I I like uh, composing. Mm. I enjoy that. I'm I'm probably happiest when I'm writing, Uh, and um, you know, I'm so observing what's going on around me, and then trying to find a way of getting that down into my slightly idiosyncratic. uh, (laughs) 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 Anyway, into my songs. Yeah. Um, and and then having the opportunity to work with people, as I said, Ben Edwards, um, Jez Burnotts from the uh, Near Future Project. There are a couple of other projects which uh, that are going to be coming uh, coming out in the next uh, year or so. Um, I've also had the privilege to, and very I'm really proud of this. I, I've just uh, finished working with my son 
uh, oh, who's wow. a musician and goes under the name King Cade. And uh, we have got a release coming out uh, in March. So uh, 22nd of March, a song um, is out called Big Fat Head. And uh, Joe, my son, who goes under the name King Cade, is releasing that. And I collaborated with him on that. So that's a very, for me, a very, very proud moment. So. I bet it is. That must be awesome. Um, That's why I like doing things like that. <laughs> <laughs> when when you do write, do you have to be in a specific place, a certain time, or do you find that inspiration just comes to you like that? Well, generally on Earth, that's, that's about it. And most of the time <laughs> awake. <Yeah. laughs> Other than that, no. <laughs> okay, that's look. about it, really. <laughs> Neil, do you think there's any chance of you and Steve ever getting back together again and, and performing as as Blamange on on tour? No, 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 that won't happen. Stephen, unfortunately, because of his medical condition, won't be uh, performing with Blamange and is not well enough to um, record in the studio, write a record. But what he does, what he and I do do together is when there is um uh, new it were re-releasing or remastering or anything goes on with the old catalog we're both involved in that there's a lot of work going on in the background at the moment we've got things coming up for record store day oh excellent um and there's uh going to be some uh, further releases of the old catalog and steve and i work very closely together on that with that with my manager brilliant brilliant we are playing the track distant storm which um i think is absolutely excellent brilliant track and it's kind of representative of the album wonderlust it it is very much where you're at at the moment isn't it yeah i think that would be a fair call to say that uh it's um it's yeah it's definitely where i'm where i'm going um with music and um lyrically um and sonically as well and so it's uh, hopefully people uh, people enjoy that oh yeah okay well neil arthur um from Blamange, uh we wish you well with the wanderlust tour and also with the wanderlust album and i'm going to look out for big fat head and uh, see if we can find that we'll definitely give that a play as well yeah well if you if you need to look it's on the disco halal label um and you'll find it on our uh, website uh, or um, on our Facebook page, Blanche Facebook page, um, and Twitter. So people can keep in touch and uh, give me a wave or whatever, send me a message. Um, and uh, I don't want to don't take up too much more of your time, so I'll say thank you very much indeed. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, good luck with your programs over there. And um, I, I wish I was in a... <laughs> Uh, slightly warmer climate as well at the moment, so I'm slightly envious of where you're calling me from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you anything about the ice cold mojitos or the lovely pool up. No, <laughs> I'm in a studio as well. <laughs> I've had some lovely, lovely times in Spain. I've had some very, very nice times in Spain. Well, next time you're over, maybe we'll meet up and have an ice cold beer somewhere. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. Yeah, great. I, I played, I was there playing football last year in Valencia. Oh, I wow. still play football, so I was oh, over there playing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, you, you have a good one. And you, sir. And uh, oh, good okay. luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bye. sir. See you soon. See you then. Bye now. Bye-bye.